Hey, what's going on, guys? How you guys doing today? Good morning to all of you in Japan, and thank you guys very much for joining me today on another live lesson. It's been a very, very beautiful day here in Long Beach. It's in the mid 70s today. Not a single cloud in the sky, and、uh, I really wish I could just go outside and spend some time out there because it is such a nice day out here. What's going on, guys? How you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. And、um, I just want to say thank you guys to thank you to every single one of you who turned in your homework, right?、Um, I got a lot of messages, messages on Instagram、uh, yesterday and the day before using the expressions that you guys learned.、Um, I shared some of it on my Hapa e k a i w a Instagram account, and I also got a lot of messages from you guys as well. So thank you guys very, very much. For doing your homework, right?、Um, it's one thing to learn the, you know, memorize the expressions, it's another to actually use it and apply it. And you guys use some really awesome pictures, and、uh, I thought it was really cool to see you guys use the expressions. So let's continue to do that.、Um, we'll, you know, learn the expressions, and at the same time, we'll make sure that you guys get a chance to use it、uh, in your everyday conversation. All right? Okay, guys,、um, so today we want to go over an expression called cabin fever. All right, Kyo wa ne, kono cabin fever to yu ne, idiom kara start wo shitai to mo imas. で今日のイディオムに入る前にね先ほどこうバーッとこうねちょっと英語で喋ってしまったのですが、えー、前回のねライブレッスンであのちょっと宿題を出したのですがその宿題をねあの自分の SNS や私のハパ英会話にねこうシェアをしてくださった皆さんありがとうございますまた YouTube のコメント欄の方にもねあのこうセンテンスを使っていただいた方が何人かいたのですがやはりね自分で使って初めてねその言葉の意味言葉の使い方が分かってくると思いますのでまた今後もねレッスンが終わってから皆さんに宿題を出していきたいと思います。OK、So let's go over our idiom for today。Alright、So this is actually a pretty interesting idiom。This is called cabin fever。Cabin fever。So what does cabin fever mean? Well let's take a look at it word by word。When we're talking about this word cabin、cabin is Something like that, right? You go up into the mountains and you have like a smaller house made out of wood, right? Typically, when you go skiing or when you go snowboarding, you stay at a cabin. And fever. Fever is usually a word we use when you are feeling very sick, right? You get sick, maybe you have a sore throat, you have a runny nose, and if it's really bad, you also have a fever. So, cabin fever. Does that mean you get a fever inside the cabin? <laughs> of course not. Okay? まずこれ直訳すると、キャビンはこちらの小屋を意味するんですね。特にあの山にある小さな小屋を表すのですが、小屋の中のフィーバー、これはあの病気の、ね、熱を指すのですが、じゃあ小屋の中で熱が出るのか、まあ、もちろんね、こちらイディオムなので、It's not like that. Okay? So let me explain what cabin fever means. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you in English using a lot of different examples. So I want you guys to try to get an idea what this word really means. Okay, so when you have cabin fever, you typically feel bored, you feel restless, or you feel irritated. And why do you feel this way? This is the most important part. You feel bored, you feel restless, and you feel irritated because you've been inside your house for such a long time, right? And maybe you guys are starting to feel that right now. When you are inside, inside your house, when you are indoors for such a long time, you start getting bored, you start getting risk restless, and you start getting irritated. You have cabin fever, okay? So, how did this word or this idiom originate? Why does this expression mean to feel bored, restless, and irritated? So, this, this one is origin right here. Origin. ここ由来のことですね。So, the origin of this idiom right here is being trapped indoors during winter. 
So maybe, you know, if you live in California, this doesn't really apply because LA is always, always beautiful. It's always warm out here. So people are not going to get cabin fever in Los Angeles. But let's say, for example, you live in Japan in a place like Hokkaido, where it's very cold. It snows a lot during the winter time. When it's snowing a lot in Hokkaido and you live in Hokkaido, even if you want to go outside, you can't go outside. So you get stuck spending time inside of your house. And maybe for a couple of days, maybe for a week, no problem. But when you are inside your house for two weeks, three weeks, one month, and you want to go outside, but it's snowing so much that you can't go out, the restaurants are not open, you start getting cabin fever. So that is the original meaning, the origin of this idiom right here. Okay? I hope that makes sense. So, um, just a little bit of 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 a little bit 落ち着きがなかったりイライラすることを表すんですねなのでこの表現はただ単にイライラするとか退屈をするのではなく重要なポイントはここなんですね外に出られないずっと家に過ごしているからこういう風に感じることこれがキャビンフィーブになるわけですね OK でこれもともと由来は何かというと例えばねロサンゼルスに住んでるとねもう一年中あったかいので People don't get cabin fever in Los Angeles. But, 例えばね、北海道とか雪がたくさん降るね、場所に住んでいれば、冬になるとね、もう大雪で外に出れない時ってありますよね。まあ、下手したらね、ほんと1週間、2週間、3週間、あまりにも外が寒くて、雪が降っていて、外に出れない状態、出れないから落ち着きがなくなってきて、どんどんイライラしてくる。ここからもともとこの cabin fever っていう言葉が、スタートしたんですね。Okay, so that is the word cabin fever. So in today's lesson, この cabin fever だけではなく、I have a lot of useful expressions for you guys. Okay, so let's look at the symptoms for cabin fever. Let's take a look at the symptoms. Symptoms, what does symptoms mean? Symptoms is, let's say for example, you catch a cold. What are some symptoms of colds? Maybe you get a runny nose. You get a sore throat. You have a fever. These are called symptoms. Okay? So, what are symptoms of cabin fever? Well, first, like I mentioned here, you feel restless or irritated. Restless. What does it mean to be restless? So, if you take out the last, you have rest, right? You're resting, right? You're just hanging out, you're chilling. You're resting. Restless is the opposite. You can't sit still. You're moving back and forth. You're playing with your fingers. You are restless, right? You can't stay calm. It's very difficult for you to stay calm. That's what it means to stay or to be restless. And irritated or also annoyed, right? Means that little things start s bothering you, right? Maybe things that typically don't bother you bother you, but that's what irritation is all about. So, symptoms number one is feeling restless or irritated. You could also say annoyed. Annoyed is another word you can use. Another one, feeling lethargic. Feeling lethargic or sluggish. Okay? Maybe to many of you, this word lethargic is a new word. Okay, so what does it mean to feel lethargic? <laughs> so, lethargic means that you have. No energy. You don't feel like doing anything. You're just, you just wake up in the morning and you're just like, uh, I just don't feel like doing anything today.、Uh, I just have like no energy. This is what lethargic means. Same thing as sluggish. Okay? Sluggish. So this word is originally from the word slug. S L U G. Slug is actually a bug, it's an insect, right? So, what a slug is, it's an insect. It's like a slow moving insect. It's like very slimy. And because it moves really, really slow, 
when you're not feeling active, when you're feeling, when your body is feeling slow and tired, you say that you are sluggish, okay? So this means having no energy at all. You just don't feel like doing anything. Or also, unmotivated, okay? means you have no motivation whatsoever. So um, in English, we have another way of saying this. We say um, to feel, feel blah. <laughs> That's what the word is here, B-L-E-H, to feel blah, okay? This is a very conversational way of saying, I don't feel like doing anything today. I feel blah today, <laughs> okay? It's a very conversational way of saying you have no energy, okay? じゃあちょっとここで一回日本語の解説を入れたいと思います。まずここのね、symptoms、何を意味するのか、もう皆さんもね、ゲスできたと思いますが、symptoms は症状を表すんですね。例えば病気の症状の symptoms。じゃあここはね、キャビンフィーバーの症状は何なのか。まずは、restless or irritated。先ほども紹介したようにね、あの説明したように、rest はこう休むことを表すのですが、restless。要するに、休むことができない。落ち着きがないことを表します。まあ、それに加えて、irritated。イライラする。もうすぐにイライラしてしまう。これがまず一つ、キャビンフィーバーの symptom なんですね。もう一つはこのね、表現、lethargic。もしかしたらね、多くの方たちにとっては初めて聞く表現かもしれないのですが、lethargic は要するにね、元気がないことを表すんですね。もう元気がない、やる気がない、だるいということを表すのがこちらの lethargic。sluggish もね、もう基本的に同じなんですよ。sluggish はもともと slug、slug という言葉からね、発した言葉で、これ、あの虫なんですよね日本語で言うナメクジのことを表し何かがこうノロノロノロとノロノロと動くものがスラックねナメクジそうですよねだから例えばこうノロノロした人のことをスラックの,のように表すことができるんですね例えばだから今日はもう本当にやる気がないなと言いたい時に I feel sluggish today というふうに表すことができますまあ、なのでね、もうずっと家にいるとね、時間はたっぷりあるんだけど、なぜかね、you start feeling sluggish, you just start losing that energy, right? で、次ね、ここは多分大丈夫ですね。unmotivated。こちらはモチベーションがもうどんどんどんどん下がっていて、モチベーションがない状態。これが一つの症状です。OK? で、これをもうちょっとね、こう会話っぽく言うとね、これ全部合わせて、feeling blah って言うんですね。blah っていうのは bleh のようにね、表現するのですが、もう blah っていうのはなんか自分のこう、今感じているのをそのまんま言葉に出した感じですよね。I feel blah today っていうともう今日は本当にやりたや、やる気がないなっていうのを表すのが、ちょっとこの交互的な言い方になります。Okay, back to English. Okay, we're switching back and forth right now. All right. So the other couple things,、um, we have difficulty concentrating, right? Concentrating or focusing. So let's say, for example, you're trying to read a book, but your mind just starts wandering and it's very difficult for you to focus or concentrate on one thing. Maybe you're trying to do a task and you're easily distracted and you start doing other things. It's very difficult for you to concentrate. The other one, <laughs> this is actually happening to me too. Food craving. When you crave something, it means that you really, really want something right now. Okay? So let's say, for example, I am craving ramen right now. I am craving a burrito. I want some Mexican food right now. When you crave something, it means that you want it really badly. Okay? So. Another symptom of cabin fever is that you just want to eat food all the time, right? And I think this happens typically when you're bored, right? When you're bored, I think you tend to crave food. You just eat, and then two hours go by, and then you eat again, and then next thing you know, you realize, oh my god, I ate about six or seven meals today, <laughs> right? You're constantly eating, okay? All right. じゃあね、最後の2つ、ここはね、集中ができない。Having difficulty concentrating. 
そしてここの「クレイビン」って言葉は何かを無償,無償に何々をしたいということを表すんですねだから例えば無償に何かが食べたい無償にラーメンが食べたい僕の場合はメキシカンが大好きなので今無償にメキシカンフードが食べたいこのねキャビンフィーブルの一つの症状がやっぱねこう退屈だとこれ不思議ですよねなんかお腹かすくお腹がすくというかとにかく食べ始めてしまう気づいたらなんかもう1日にわたって6食7食ぐらい食べてる自分がいて今多分僕自身もそうなんですけど本当にコントロールしないとね I feel like I'm getting kind of fat right now you know so I gotta make sure that I、uh, stick to my diet okay so these are some symptoms of having cabin fever Now let's go to the next. We have the word coping with cabin fever. Coping with cabin fever. So, coping, maybe for many of you, this is a new word. To cope with something means to deal with something. Typically, deal with something that is difficult to deal with a problem. So, this means how do you deal with cabin fever? How do you fight cabin fever? How do you get over cabin fever? So, I listed up a few things that we can do to cope with cabin fever. Let's take a look at a couple of them here. First, take up a new hobby. I hope you guys can see it. Take up a new hobby. Take up, what does it mean? Take up a new hobby means to start a new hobby. Okay, to start a new hobby. So, for example, you can take up cooking, you can take up drawing. Of course, we can go outside right now, but you can also say take up surfing, take up tennis. You only take up playing tennis, right? So this means to start a new hobby. Instead of saying to start a new hobby, you can say take up a new hobby. Okay, a good alternative expression right there. Next, pick up a new language or pick up a new skill. Pick up a new language means to learn a new language. Pick up a new skill means to learn or acquire a new skill. So these are very similar. This is to start, this is to learn or to acquire. So you can say, I'm going to take up a new hobby or I'm going to pick up a new hobby. Those are both used kind of interchangeably right here. Okay? So maybe. You have you know, all this time on your hands, you're studying English with me right now, but maybe you want to also study Korean. Maybe you want to study Spanish. It's a good time to pick up a new hobby right now. Okay? And also, brush up on your English. Okay? To brush up on your English. When you brush up on your English, it means to kind of restart learning English again. You started learning English at one point, and maybe for two or three years, you stopped learning because you were maybe busy with work. Whatever the situation may be, you started something, you took a break, and you restart again to brush up on your English. Okay? じゃあここちょっと日本語でいきますね。まず、Take up a new hobby. これね、シンプルに言うとね、start a new hobby と意味は全く同じなんですよ。ただ、start の代わりに使える交互的な言い方として、take up a new hobby ということができるんですね。なので、ここは新しい趣味を始めることを表し、ここのハービーの代わりに、I'm going to take up tennis ね。あのテニスを始めます。I'm going to take up cooking ね。料理を始めます。I'm going to take up drawing のように、Take up を new, uh, start に置き換えて使えば問題ないかと思います。Okay? でここ多分ね、皆さんも知ってると思うのですが、pick up a new language、okay? これは新しい言語を習得する、身につけることを表すんですね。なのでこれは言語とかスキルを身につける。ここ結構ね、あのこう置き換えて使うことができ、まあ、何かを身につける、何かを始めるということで、まあ、趣味を、趣味はね、身につけることはないのですが、日常会話では、I, I want to pick up a new hobby. 新しい趣味を身につけたいですまではいかないですけど結構ねそういう言い方をしますのでそこも覚えておいてくださいね。OK で最後こちらの方がね Brush up on your English 多分皆さんがね今回このチャンネルにねこのライブレッスンにね参加している理,理由の一つが You want to brush up on your English, right? I'm assuming most of you studied English since middle school and then to high school and then to now and maybe in between you had a little break. But now it's a good time to brush up on your English. 
まあ、皆さんもねあの中学校からほとんどがね英語の勉強を始めたと思うのですがもしかしたらちょっと間にブランクがあってまた再スタートをしたのかもしれない。ブラッシュアップオンは何々を勉強し直すやり直すという意味で使われるんですねなのでここでは英語の勉強をやり直す磨き直すといった意味合いになります OK and a couple more things here、um, rearrange your furniture to rearrange your furniture it means to move your furniture around right so maybe your house is cluttered right now so you want to clean it up a little bit move you know your sofas and your tables around And you have a new space. It feels good when you move furniture around because it feels like you are in a new space. So, rearranging your furniture is another good way to deal with cabin fever. Connecting with people. Okay, connecting with people. Obviously, right now, we cannot have direct contact with people. So, what are people doing right now? We are connecting through Zoom. We're connecting through Skype or FaceTime, right? A lot of virtual partying and virtual meeting going on, meetings going on right now. So stay in touch with your friends. Stay connected with all of your friends. And last one here break a sweat. Break a sweat. I am actually breaking a sweat right now from talking with all this energy right now.、Um, break a sweat means to start sweating. What does it mean to start sweating? I'm assuming you guys can guess what that means, right? It means to exercise, right? You could go maybe for a jog if you can go outside, or maybe do home workouts, do push ups, okay? Do sit ups, right? Maybe you could do some yoga, but break a sweat, okay? Start sweating so you get that blood flowing inside of your body. It makes you feel much better when you got that blood flowing inside of you, all right? そう、ここではね、まず、えー、フォーニチュー、これは家具のね、こう位置をちょっと動かして、まあ、やっぱね、家の中でもちょっと家具を動かしたりすることで、なんかこう、スペース感が変わって、気持ちのね、切り替えにもなりますよね。なので、rearrange your furniture、これが一つです。もう一つは、connect with others、これは友達とつながることですね。まあ、もちろん今、こう、直接ね、こう、会ってであの、会うことはできないのですが、まあ、例えば、ズームを使ったりとかして、まあ、ね、常にこう、人と連絡を取り合うこと。そして、break a sweat。この表現はね、汗をかくことを表すんですね。要するに、これ、運動することを表します。まあ、今はね、もう自宅の運動になると思うのですが、汗をかくことによってね、本当に気持ちのね、切り替えにもなりますし、気分転換にもなりますので、まあ、じっとしている代わりに、必ず動くようにしてください。And the most important thing here is really to have a daily routine. Okay? まあやっぱね、この辺はね、もうすべて取り入れるのも大事なのですが、やっぱりね、when we are stuck in the house, it's easy to just have no schedule. You wake up when you want, you stay up very late. But having a daily routine, especially in times like this, is very important. And that's why I'm doing these live lessons at 8 o'clock in the morning. When you have a schedule to follow, even when you're staying at home, it helps you deal with cabin fever. All right? So make sure you guys have a daily routine. It's going to help you with the situation that we are in right now. そして何よりね、その一日の日課というか、ルーティーンをやっぱ作ることが非常に大事です。どうしてもね、やっぱこう自宅待機で家から仕事をし始めるとね、なんかその寝る時間とかもちょっと狂ってくるし、朝ね、通常だったら6時に起きるのがね、8時半とか9時になったりね、夜更かししたりすることによって、体のバランスがね、どんどんどんどんおかしくなっていくんですよね。そうすると、どんどんどんどんこのキャビンフィーブにね、なりがちなので、しっかりとこのルーティーンを作るようにしてください。OK、じゃあ最後にこのキャビンフィーブの使い方。So, with them,、um, cabin fever. まあ、これはね、あのこう日常的にねよく使うかって言われたら、そこまで頻繁に使うものではないのですが、まあ、今の状況の中では結構役に立つフレーズです。もし使うとしたら、You want to use the word have or get with ca-、uh, cabin fever. So, you would say something like, I think I have cabin fever. なんかもうずっと家にいてイライラしてきた。ししててききたたようなしてきたと思います I think I have cabin fever. I'm starting to get cabin fever. もう最近全然外出してないから、なんかもうね、落ち着きがないというか、イライラしてきたよ。I'm starting to get cabin fever. 
maybe your friend it calls you or maybe you know your friend texts you and he's like ah oh, you know I'm feeling very sluggish these days I'm very unmotivated I'm having a difficult time concentrating maybe your friend tells that to you so they'll keep that to me huh it sounds like you have cabin fever no you need ah like cabin fever no so so that net having cabin fever I'm not there in that you who need it sounds like you have cabin fever を使うことができます。Alright, so, まあ、ここではね、この cabin fever はね、まあ、その会話でよく使うかって言われたらね、多分一般的にはね、こう、家にこう閉じこもってる状態ってないと思うのですが、今の状況ではね、このフレーズはね、ぴったりなフレーズだと思います。なので、覚えておいてください。Alright, guys,、um, so that was、uh, the expression for today, cabin fever, but Just besides cabin fever, I think there are a lot of useful words and expressions from this lesson here today. So I hope you guys jotted everything down in your notebook and I'm gonna assign you guys some homework right now. Okay? じゃあ今日はね、キャビンフィーブのね、表現を紹介しましたが、その他にもね、多分あの、日常会話で使える単語とか、日常表現がたくさん詰まっていたと思うので、ちゃんとノートに書くようにしてくださいね。はい、それでは今日の宿題です。So this is、uh, the homework for today. 今日はね、ちょっと事前にも書きました。Okay, let's take a look at this. So homework. How are you coping with cabin fever? How are you coping with cabin fever? How are you dealing with cabin fever? Okay? さっきの cope の言葉ですね。皆さんはこの cabin fever にならないようにどんなことをしていますか Are you taking up a new hobby? Are you picking up a new language? Are you brushing up on your English? Are you rearranging your furniture? まあ今日ね、あの学んだフレーズを使ってもいいですし、まあ皆さんがね、この cabin fever にならないためにやっていることをぜひ、えー、宿題としてセンテンスで書いてみてください。で、センテンスで書くときは、前回と同じように SNS、えー、まあ基本的に、ね、IG だったら私の方に直接届きますので、インスタグラムでこれとハッシュタグハパレッスンを入れて私にタグ付けを入れてくれたら、If you get lucky, I might share your post.、Okay? でもしくはね、その、えー、SNS を持っていない方であれば、今日の YouTube のコメント欄に、えー、こちらのね、えー、答えというか、この返答を書いていただければと思います。で、まあちょっとね、SNS にはちょっと書きたくない、シェアしたくないというのであれば、No problem. Just write it in your notebook, okay? The most important thing is to write it down and try using it, okay? If you don't use it, you know, it's gonna be difficult to apply it in real life. Alright, so, 今日の宿題です。How are you coping with cabin fever? Go ahead and share that on your SNS. You could write it in the comment box below, or you could go ahead and write it in your notebook. And、um, starting today, I want to introduce a quote, kind of like the quote of the day. I am a pretty big on quotes. I like reading quotes. It motivates me. It helps me, in, get, it helps me get inspired to start my day. So I'm going to share a quote with you guys every time we have a lesson. And、um, hopefully, it inspires you and it motivates you. All right? Thank you very much. I appreciate it <laughs> for your thousand yen. Okay, here's the quote for today It's not what happens to you. But how you react, that matters. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it, that matters. So, what does that mean? This means that, of course, there's this terrible situation that's happening to us. We're going through some very challenging times right now. We can't change it. But that's not what's important. What's really important is. How are we going to react to these t y p e of situations? What are we going to do in these t y p e of situations? I'm going through a difficult situation. You're going through a difficult situation. Everybody in this world is going through this difficult situation together right now. The one thing that you can control is how you react to it, right? So I really like this, especially right now, because depending on how we look at the situation, Everything changes, right? でね、あの今回ね、今日からね、えーと、こちらのライブレッスンで、えー、最後に、えー、僕がね、大好きな、大好きというかね、あの僕のねあの、ノートブックに書いてあるクォートを皆さんにシェアしたいと思います。で、僕はね、基本的に毎朝ね、ちょっと新しいクォートを自分のね、ジャーナルの中に書いてね、ちょっとインスパイアするようにはしているのですが、まあね、こうやってライブレッスンをやっているので、皆さんにもシェアしたいと思います。
で今日のね、コードは、It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters。これはね、何がね、起こるのかが重要ではないと。何が重要なのか。自分がそれにどう反応するのかどういう行動をとるのかどういう考え方と見方を持つのかが重要だと、まあ、要するにねこの大変な時期は今もうみんながねこう世界中のみんなが迎えているとこの状況は変えることはできないでも自分がコントロールできることはたくさんありますよね今の状況に対する態度であったりこれからとる行動っていうのはもう見方反応の仕方で変わりますなので、Here is your quote for today. It's not what happens to you that matters, or it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. All right? All right, guys.、Um, well, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed the live lesson. The next live lesson is going to be Sunday, April 19th at 8 o'clock in the morning. 次回はね、4月19日日曜日午前8時となります。次回はジャーナリングについて、えー、ちょっといろいろシェアをしたいと思います。まあ、僕の中ではね、あの学習法の中ではジャーナリングが一番効果的だと思っていますので、まあ、私が生徒さんたちに進めているやり方を皆さんに、まあ、2、30分にわたってシェアしたいと思います。そして最後にね、今日のレッスンノート、今日はね、ちょっと見えやすかったですかね、もうちょっとこう間隔を空けて書いたのですが、まあ、もし見れなかったら、こちらのね、あの、ライブレッスンのノートはすべて、ハパ英会話のオンラインコミュニティ、ハパバディーズに、あの、PDF 版ダウンロード式で、今日のレッスンノートを、あの、無料で出していますので、まあ、えー、ハパバディーズは7月いっぱいは無料でお試しできますので、今日のレッスンノートを、の PDF 版が欲しい方は、ぜひ、ハパバディーズを、に、えー、入ってみてください。<笑> All right. All right, guys, I'm all thank you very much. 今日はちょっと30分超えてしまいましたね。今日はなんかもうちょっと。I had a lot of energy today and I'm like breaking a sweat right now. 本格的に今ちょっと汗をかいているので。I'm gonna turn this thing off, maybe go take a shower and、uh, you know, finish the rest of my day. All right, guys,、um, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day today. As always, thank you very much for joining my live session. I, you know, this is really the highlight of my day, every single day. Wow, thank you very much.、Uh, Nishihara san, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll see you guys again on Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Let's、uh, spread the positiv- positivity, not the virus. You guys stay safe and I'll catch you guys again next time. Take it easy, guys. Peace.